I'm here to talk to you about cross promotion. Up next is uh, cross promotion network uh, for games. We work on a few different platforms right now, mostly on social and browser, and soon we'll be on mobile as well. All right, so this is the, de the uh, definition for cross promotion straight out of Wikipedia. But what does it really mean? For us people in the gaming industry, what this really means is that if you have a game, you're promoting another game, and the other game promotes you. Usually more than just back and forth, you have a whole network of games. Every game is sending traffic to the other game. Cross-promotion has always existed, and there are different formats of it. Um, Lawyers sending clients to fellow lawyers and then sending clients back to the same lawyers. That's one form of cross-promotion. Uh, you have product tie-ins, fast food restaurants that when you buy food, you get a toy with it. That's a form of product tie-in. And of course, we have social gaming where users are sent from one game to the other. Uh, cross-promotion can also be a closed network like you've probably seen with Zynga when they launch a new game. It's usually promoted heavily to, to the old games, but it's all kept in the same network. Or it could be an open network such as Upnext or any other of the uh, cross-promotion networks that are out there on mobile or Facebook or any other social network. Uh, I think I spoke about this. I'll skip forward a little bit. Okay, so what are the advantages of cross-promotion? First of all is the cost, which is virtually nothing. So it's free. There is no cost. And that's probably the biggest advantage. Now, it's also a win-win for everyone who's involved. Everyone gets to grow together and promote one another. And of course, it's easy to use. And when done right, which I'm going to show examples later on, when done right, it can be very successful. Now let's talk about games, social games. A couple of things happened over the last couple of years on Facebook. The first thing is the rising cost of advertising. It used to be a lot cheaper to advertise on Facebook and acquire new users. Over the years with the competition, as pretty much all of you out there compete for the same few paying users, uh, the costs have risen. The second thing is that Facebook specifically is also uh, recently clamped down on is, is viral marketing. Those days when everyone knew that you planted a new tree on Farmville are long gone and now Facebook is very strict with what's allowed to go on your newsfeed and so forth. So both of these factors uh, have really hurt games when they wanted to acquire users or basically risen their uh, marketing cost. And the third um, ad advantage, really, that, that I mentioned earlier is that it's easy for, for a marketing team to implement. Really, cross-promotion should be a part of every marketing plan from the time that the game is just being sketched out. The marketing team should know that they're going to have a budget for this campaign and do some viral marketing as much as they can and also use cross-promotion. When choosing a cross-promotion network or a cross-promotion service, you should look out for a few main things. Here I'm just going to list them and then I'll get into more details. Good UI and UX, the relevancy of the ads to the game, uh, fresh offers, meaning the offers can't be stale, they need to be new, the right timing of when to do the cross-promotion, and the targeting of the ads. All right, now I'll show some examples. This shouldn't reflect in any way on, on the games or the cross-promotion networks that are shown. Um, as you see in this example, this game chose to use two different cross-promotion networks. So they have a bar on top, they have a bar on the side. There are a lot of banners, uh, some text links. They're just There's too much stuff going on. The user gets to basically lose focus from what he's supposed to do and eventually blocks out the ads just so you can focus on the game. Uh, after a while, it's sort of like being in Times Square and seeing all these lights flashing there. 
And just like with any regular website, which most of you probably uh, use on a daily basis, you avoid the banners on the sides and just focus on the content. Here on the other hand, we have an example of pretty good UI with the size of the bar fitting right on top of the game. Uh, the color scheme is, in this case, is also similar and uh, it looks pretty good. But there's one main problem here, which is the relevancy. You see ads for, um, in this case, slots games and the game itself is a football game. Football game is mostly male and slots games are mostly played by female. On the other hand, over here you see an example of a relevant um, ad. A slots game showing an ad for another slots game. Um, this leads to a much higher CTR. It's also better for the user who wants to continue playing. Um, if he likes to play a slots game, let him continue play another slots game or a game from a similar category, such as bingo, for example. Here um, we see we see two two different formats of uh, cross promotion that show up at the end of the process. The one on the left shows multiple ads, and really, when you show it at the end of the process, the user, if he's finished playing and he wants to leave, he's not really going to spend too much time now checking out each ad, what each one is, what they show, and they're really not relevant to the game that he just finished playing. The one on the right. On the other hand, it shows uh, a, single, a single offer. There's a text on the top that is related directly to what just happened in the game, that the user ran out of coins. So now it's offering him to continue playing another game. This also obviously results in a higher CTR and, um, and is, again, good for the user. So cross-promotion networks should be good for all three parties involved, which are the publisher, the advertiser, and the user. Another example of uh, single use of single versus uh, multiple, which shows when, when ads are not fresh. The bar on the top, you see multiple uh, text links and banners. After a couple of times that it scrolls, you've already seen all, all the inventory uh, that they have to offer on this specific bar, and which probably lasts maybe 30, 40 seconds. And for the rest of the time that the player is playing, he's not going to be looking up there really. And because he's already seen the, these ads, they're not, they're not doing anything for him. It's not attractive. It's not going to lead to more clicks. The bar at the bottom, which is a new product that we just launched, it scrolls every few seconds, but a player can be uh, on the game for minutes and not see the same ad. Every time his eye might look up top, he's going to see an offer for, for another game. And of course, the games, as I said before, have to also be related um, to, to what the user is currently doing. Timing of the ad. This is probably the most important thing. Uh, at least that's something that we at Upnext uh, think, and it's really the basis of our business. We decided to tackle cross-promotion from a different angle and not go with an exchange bar as some of our competitors do. We decided to only show the cross-promotion when the developer chooses to show it, and that's usually before the user is going to leave the game. When is the user likely to leave the game? When he finishes his coins, or his lives, or energy, or any type of economy that the game offers. Once the user finishes that, and he decides that he's not going to purchase more, he's very likely to leave the game. At that, at that point, you should show him the cross-promotion offer and basically guide him to another game. The advertiser, in this case, also gets a user that's free to play. He's a user that plays a lot. He only saw the offer because he finished playing, not because he saw something flashing and he wants to check it out. So you're also sending a good quality user, and you're sending many more users. Uh, a few other places that you can uh, do the cross-promotion are if, you use, if users play a certain time on a game, some, some games don't have coins or they don't have a defined exit point, but they know that after maybe a half hour of playing, 10 minutes of playing, most of their users leave. A uh, number of games played, for example, it could be on a Bubbles game. Uh, if the developer, based on a statistic, sees that after five games played, um, users leave. Or if it's a poker game, after 
few hands, 20, 50 hands of poker, the user leaves. Even if he still has coins, show him at that time. And of course, inactivity or idle user, um, which is a little more uh, shady, I think, but uh, a lot of companies choose to do it at that point. When a user is inactive, he might have gone to a different tab or even gone up and uh, walked away from his desk. He comes back, he sees a banner offering him other games to play. The last, the last thing that's very important is the targeting and constantly optimizing the, um, the inventory that's shown to, to the users. Uh, right now, in cross-promotion, it's very common to only target by, by demographics, country-wise, uh, geo-targeting, and by category. But there's a need to advance that even further and uh, know what the user has already seen and where the user wants to play next. So just targeting a user because he's from the U.S. and he plays slots, it doesn't mean that he hasn't all uh, that he hasn't already played the specific game that you're showing him. So if you know that he's already played at uh, Lucky Slots, you want to show him a different slots game maybe, or a completely other game that's in a related category. Uh, so these are things that we're working on, um, and it's part of our system right now already on social. And, and obviously by that, there's ways to do it with uh, cookies implemented and uh, tracking of, of where the users go and where they come from. Uh, since we're Facebook uh, partners uh, or approved ad providers, we're not privy to a lot of the uh, private data, so we have to use other ways, uh, legal ways obviously, to uh, be able to track as much as possible and target uh, as much as we can so our partners get the best the best traffic that they can get when they're advertising and also send out as much traffic as they can when they're with the publisher hat. Now I'll uh, present a quick uh, case study. This is a new partner that we started with about three weeks ago, a uh, slots and bingo game called Avatingo. Um, they've set it, as most of our slots partners have set, to show up when the user is out of coins or low on coins to a point when he can't place any more bets. The user here, he only has 91 coins, which is uh, lower than the minimum bet. I believe it's 100 in this game. And he, showed the mess he, he was shown the message that he's out of coins to buy more coins. He decided he doesn't want to. He, he closed it. This uh, showed up, up next. And the user now can click and go to play at another game. These are the statistics that we've seen from them, um, how they've grown. We started with them roughly here somewhere. You can see the tremendous growth, both in Mao and in Dao. Right now, we're sending this game close to somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 players daily, new players daily, uh, for free, of course, which comes out to costs of uh, s or savings of at least $50,000 if they had to buy these users from Facebook. Um, and again, they simply leveraged the traffic that they have s that's going out anyway that finished playing to gain new traffic. So it's not as if they lost anything. Many of the users that they're getting, of course, also end up paying on this game and they're very good users. In general, we're able to send 5 to 10% of a game's uh, DAO back to them in, uh, in, in clicks with pretty high conversion rates, obviously depending on if the game is new or old. A game like uh, Slotomania that has millions and millions of, of users doesn't get as many uh, new players, but it uses cross-promotion networks as a retention uh, mechanism also. Okay, so just to sum up, um, where are we going with this cross-promotion, up next, and some of the other networks, trying to think out of the box, provide the developers with the best tools out there, let them really take the tools into their hands and pick and choose what they want to do and not just force cross-promotion on them. Um, another thing that's uh, very common now, and we're also doing it with Up Next, is that uh, not simply doing social and mobile, 
you can cross platform so you can gain um, you can send out traffic on your social game and if you also have a mobile game you can then get the traffic on your mobile game so it's cross promotion cross platform uh, that's it thank you Yes. You said that uh, you send five to seven percent of DAO back every day. So then, is it will it be true to say that if I have say a game with um, where on average players have more than fifteen twenty sessions? then I can use your network for uh, uh, virality greater than one. Do you actually have examples like that? Does the question make uh, sense? Um, sort of. I mean, as far as the DAO, yes, we can send back uh, the numbers that I said. It depends on the optimization and the implementation that you're doing. We work with each partner to make sure that they're not implementing up next in a way that, uh, that that will really affect the network and by that I mean if they show it too many times if it's not in the right timing of the game users will simply close the offer and not click through as, as we expect so the timing really has to be perfect there's there's an area there w that you can play with but we've had uh, partners that have tried showing it every time a user went back to to the lobby for for example but it doesn't mean that when the user goes back to to the lobby that he wants to exit the game so if you show it every time like that you would close it and eventually the fact that they're closing it every time would also lead to less traffic because when they do see it when they want to leave they're already annoyed by this uh you know banner and they'll just close it again but would in most cases when when the implementation is correct and it's optimized, meaning that the ads shown are super relevant to the context of the game, we see uh, somewhere between 5% and higher of, of clicks coming back to you every day. And Thank you. there was another part, but I wasn't sure if I... Uh, well, the question was very simple. Like if I send for 20 days, I get 100% traffic back, right? Oh, that, that you increase your traffic? Yeah. Well, uh, that's that's an issue with you and your game. You know, with the retention, you might be losing um, traffic from another source. They might just be dropping out. But we're providing that boost, and yeah, like over time, as you sh as you saw in the graph, your traffic grows for sure. Thank you. Anyone else? No. Yes. Any questions? Thank you.